Welcome to this video on understanding analysis modeling methods for portal frames. Portal frames are commonly used in building structures and it's essential to analyze them using appropriate modeling methods. In this video, we will go over the different analysis modeling methods, their benefits and limitations, and how to use them for portal frames. Before we dive into the different analysis modeling methods for portal frames, let's quickly review some key terms that will be used throughout this video. If you're new to structural analysis, these definitions will help make the concepts more accessible. First, deflection refers to the amount that a structure bends or deforms under load. This is an important consideration when designing structures as excessive deflection can lead to structural failure. Second, ultimate limit state is the point at which a structure is no longer able to support the load placed upon it. This is also known as the point of collapse and it's an important factor to consider when analyzing portal frames. Finally, hinge formation refers to the points at which a structure begins to deform or bend under load. These points are often referred to as hinges because they represent the points at which the structure is most vulnerable to collapse. Now that we have a clear understanding of these key terms, let's dive into the different analysis modeling methods for portal frames. First, let's start with the most used methods. The first method is the elastic analysis method, which is used to check the frame deflection at the serviceability limit state. The second method is the elastic plastic analysis method, which is used to determine the forces and moments in the frame at the ultimate limit state. These two methods have largely overtaken the rigid plastic method. The rigid plastic method is a simplified approach suitable for hand calculation and graphical methods. In this method, the frame is assumed not to deform under load until all hinges required for a given mechanism are formed. The design process involves comparing several predetermined mechanisms to evaluate which one has the lowest load factor and hence represents the maximum load that could be carried by the frame prior to collapse. Moving on, we come to more complex frames such as multi-span, steps in eaves height, spring supports, or valley bases. The number of potential failure mechanisms, particularly under complex loading conditions, is vast. Alternative approaches are therefore usually incorporated to quickly establish a close approximation to the critical mechanism without the need to try all possibilities. Moreover, the elastic plastic method, in addition to finding the collapse load, determines the order in which the hinges form, the load factor associated with each hinge formation, and how the bending moments around the frame vary between each hinge formation. The frame is assumed to behave linearly between each hinge formation. Finally, elastic plastic analysis programs have replaced rigid plastic ones because they allow for more accurate determination of the bending moment diagram at any load factor, not just at collapse. The elastic plastic method is also better at finding the critical collapse mechanism and has a more complete hinge formation history compared to the rigid plastic method, which only takes into account the hinges that exist at collapse. It is perfectly possible to use a straightforward elastic analysis program in a stepwise manner to produce a pseudo-elastic plastic analysis. This is relatively easy in conceptual terms, but can be very tedious for anything but the simplest of frames. The process is an aid to understanding the way elastic plastic analysis operates. The first step is to carry out an elastic analysis at the full design loading. It is then necessary to investigate the bending moment diagram around the frame and determine the point or node at which the ratio of the applied moment to the plastic moment of resistance of the section is the greatest. This is the position of the first hinge formation. A new model is then created with a pin at that point and a pair of equal and opposite moments equal to MP of the section applied at the pin. This new model is then reanalyzed to determine the new moment diagram and hence the position of the next hinge. This process is continued until the frame is completely analyzed. 
And that's it for our video on understanding analysis modeling methods for portal frames. We have discussed the three most used methods, elastic analysis, elastic plastic analysis, and rigid plastic method. We have also examined the benefits and limitations of each approach and discussed how to use a straightforward elastic analysis program to produce a pseudo-elastic plastic analysis. By understanding these modeling methods, you will be able to analyze portal frames more effectively and accurately. It's important to note that there are significant differences between these methods. While the elastic analysis method is useful for checking frame deflection at the serviceability limit state, it doesn't take into account the behavior of the frame beyond this point. In contrast, the elastic plastic method is more comprehensive because it considers the order of hinge formation and behavior between hinges. It can accurately determine the bending moment diagram at the ultimate limit state and find the critical collapse mechanism. The rigid plastic method, on the other hand, is a simplified approach suitable for hand calculation and graphical methods. It assumes that the frame doesn't deform until all hinges required for a given mechanism are formed. Accurate analysis is crucial when it comes to designing safe and reliable structures. Inaccurate analysis could lead to structural failure, which could have serious consequences for both people and property. That's why it's important to use appropriate modeling methods and to ensure that your analysis is as accurate as possible. By understanding the benefits and limitations of each method, you'll be able to make informed decisions about which approach to use for a given project and ensure that your structures are built to withstand the forces they'll be subjected to. Remember that analyzing more complex frames, such as multi-span, steps in eaves height, spring supports, or valley bases, require alternative approaches to establish a close approximation to the critical mechanism. Elastic plastic analysis programs have largely replaced rigid plastic ones due to the many benefits that they offer, such as establishing the state of the frame at any load factor and determining the critical collapse mechanism accurately. We hope that this video has been informative and useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more informative videos like this. Thank you for watching.